We know that few years back, there was a political gimmick. The Babri Masjid and Ram Janbhumi issue. You know Babri Masjid and Ram Janbhumi issue in Ayodhya. I would like to know how many of us Muslims and Hindus knew about Babri Masjid and Ram Janbhumi before the politicians made it a gimmick. How many of us knew? I had never heard of this Babri Masjid. And when I asked the common Hindu, he had never heard of this. Only after the politicians made it a political gimmick, people knew about it. And we know on the 6th of December 1992, they wanted to have a big procession, a gathering at this site. The Supreme Court had explicitly said that no gathering anywhere close to the disputed site. A group of politicians, they make it a political gimmick of Ram Jan Bhumi issue and the Babri Masjid issue. They want to gather on 6th of December. The ruling politicians know very well that they have the Supreme Court backing. They could have easily stopped the gathering, easily. But then they think, if I stop, I may lose vote. So they let the gathering take place. <laughs> the gathering takes place and then they say, spontaneously, the thousands of cards were gathered there. Spontaneously, the Babri Masjid was destroyed, spontaneously. You know, there was live recording on the various satellite channels. We know that with trishus and lathis, how can you get down a structure? Is it possible? No. They had planted explosives with this pre-planned act that planted explosives. Anyone can see. You don't have to be a specialist of military. You can see it with your eyes. That explosive were planted and that's how the structure came down. Can the structure come down with lathis and trishus? Maybe George Bush saw this. 6 December 1992, that's how he had conducted the inside job of 11 September. <laughs> Time does not permit me to speak about the inside job. That requires a lecture by itself. Inside job of 11 September. Many Americans have spoken about that. Maybe he saw it and he got the idea that let's conduct in New York also. Later on, what happens? This emerges into riots. Throughout the country, there were riots. It is the largest riot after partition in the whole country, where tens of thousands of innocent human beings were killed, mainly Muslims. Who's to blame? The innocent Indians. They are instigated by the politicians. Fight. Kill the opposite religion people. Instigated. Innocent people, they get instigated and they do the act. We know that even in Bombay, one of the cities that was maximum affected was Bombay. Even during partition, the riots that took place in Bombay was the worst in the history of Bombay. Even during partition, so many people were not killed as during the December 92 and January 93 riots. The police, if they wanted, they could have easily prevented the riot. Very easy. With the backing of the reserve police, with the backing of the military, easily they could have done it. But they did not do it. Most of them were silent spectators. Some were good, they tried, but they were in a minority. Majority were silent spectators, some were party to it. I am aware that even the police is controlled by the politicians. So the police wants to do something, the politicians come in between. So the blame goes back to the politicians. Later on, the government appoints a single judge commission to appease the minority. And they appointed Justice Sri Krishna. It was famously called as the Sri Krishna Commission. And we know that Justice Sri Krishna, he was and is a devout and a practicing Hindu. But at the same time, he is an upright and honest judge. Just like how we have Justice Suresh here. <laughs> an honest and an upright judge. The verdict he gave, it did not go down the throat of the government. It takes a few years. And he had analyzed the full cases of the riot. He spoke with the politicians, with the police. Individually, he visited 26 police stations, analyzed the records, spoke with the police officer, junior and senior, spoke with the victims, spoke with the media, and after a great deal of research, he presented, we have this damning verdict of Sri Krishna Commission. He even gave suggestions, how can we prevent these rights? But, you know, it takes time. By the time this happened, the government says, bygones are bygones. Because they know if they implement the report, 
they are afraid that they will lose the vote bank. At that time, to appease the minority, they appointed the commission. How many commissions? I don't know. How many? I don't know how many commissions have been implemented. I think Justice Suresh can tell. How many commissions that they appoint have really been implemented in India? How many? So here we know it is a delaying tactics. The innocent Indians, especially the Muslim victims, we have faith in the judiciary system of India. <laughs> if the politicians betray us, if our other citizen fellow members betray us, if the police betrays us, in this country, we have yet faith in the judiciary system. <laughs> and we know that finally, most of the innocent people, whether they are arrested, etc., they are finally released. But the damage done to them, it cannot be undone.